Hello, greetings, and welcome to the broadcast. I am here today with my brother in Christ, Mr. Ted Jordan, and him and his wife are at a couple that is just being led by the spirit and doing what God's called them to do. He has a very in-depth background in acting um, and voiceover and commercials. You may recognize his face from the Sears person or the U.S. Army and all of these different places where his smiling face has been all over. But he's also a screenplay writer and an author of an amazing book that's going to be coming out in a couple months. And that's what we want to kind of talk about today is because there is there's times where books come out and we need to hear the message. And uh, this book is not a true story, but I'm telling you, based on what I see going on in the world, it probably could be <laughs> to some level. So, Ted, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Maggie. Good to be here. Oh, it's such a blessing to have you on the broadcast. I'm really excited about what God's doing through you with your book. And uh, can you tell the audience a little bit? And I don't want you to give away too much because we want them to get the book. And I know it's coming out in a couple months. But what motivated you to write this screenplay? And tell them a little bit about the plot so that they'll know why they need to read this. All right. Well, um, yeah, I really came up with this in 2007 right before Barack Obama was actually running for president and that sort of thing. So what I did, I did some research. And at the time, um, everybody was in this euphoric type, type of, kind, of, you know, kind of space in reference to first black president and so on and so forth. And I wanted to do a what if scenario. Um, what if, and I didn't want it dated. So I made the president, the first female president, she was the first female president. So um, what if she came across as this wonderful, you know, kind of um, uh, not creative, but conservative uh, Muslim slash Christian moderate? What, you know, what would that look like? And with the euphoria of, you know, Barack Obama being elected or, you know, the potential of all that going on, what I saw was just normal, everyday common sense just flying out of the window. No one asked what he was about. Nobody asked what, you know, nobody, nobody. Political correctness, you know, and then, of course, in the in the African-American community, uh, even in church, you know, with church people, it, no one asked. It was just, he's the first black guy, so we've got to get him elected. And I said, well, what if we had the same thing, but with a female president? Barack Obama came off as this likable guy, family. The whole package was there. You know, the optics was there. And so as a result, I came up with the idea, what if this wasn't exactly what they were trying to portray this to be? And so I came up with the Restore. Um, it's a super secret agency of Christians that are recruited all around the world. So they come from all walks of life. And it is extremely well funded. So this is it's, it's not a broke ministry begging for change and all this other kind of stuff because we serve a God that has you know owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And that's even limited because that's only the that's the only thing we really know how to honestly you know grab hold of you know visually. But our God is wealthy. So you know as a result of that I wanted this agency to be virtually limitless in technology, in funding, in aircraft, in vehicles, whatever it needs to get the job done that fights evil. And so this particular thing has to do with the Constitution. And right now, our Constitution is under attack. Yes, it is. By enemies of the state, in my humble yet accurate opinion, the Bible says that you know them by the fruit that they bear. So if you're paying attention to what scripture says, you know the fruit that certain people are bearing. It doesn't matter their skin color. It doesn't matter their gender. Um, if they sound good, but they're going against the word of God, they're not good. And so we need to be watching out for this. And this is where the restorer came into being from a screenplay. Once my pastor in New Orleans, his name is Michael Mele of White Dove Fellowship, he read the screenplay and said, you know what? You've got to make this into a novel. And I'm thinking, a novel? Man, I'm already working, you know, I'm already pegging the meter with, meter with a lot of work. So I'm like, okay, a novel. I've never written a novel before. Um, and I'm like, okay. So 
let me do my research like I always do. And let me let me go at it. I'm like, Lord, you know, open this up for me so I can do this well. Um, so I just started to, you know, do my research and I started right in after it. And um, and here we are. So the restorer is in reference to God. God is the restorer because he restores all things as new. So all of the ethnicities you can think of are involved in this. And the first storyline has to do again with the first female president of the United States pretending to be one thing, but she really is another. And through my research, I found how, how easily our elected officials, our electoral process can be easily manipulated through the electoral college and all the nine whole nine yards, how this thing can really be just bought off quite easily. And we saw with the last election cycle, how easily the, 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 the powers that be, the institutions that are supposed to be upholding what God says, because God designed government to punish the wicked and protect the innocent. But we don't see that like we're like we're supposed to see it. So that being said, the restorer, um, the, the the vector five is really what the agency is called. The restorer is God. Vector five is the is the secret agency uh, that fights against evil. So as they're doing this, what's the the um, what it's called is the uh, Pakistani Peace Accord. This accord, like the um, like Obamacare, you remember Obamacare years ago? Oh, we had to pass something in order for everyone to have, you know, you know, universal insurance. Well, nobody read that two thousand page document. Right. A lot came along with that package. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly right. So a lot of taxation goes on with that and everything. But unlike that, the uh, Pakistani Peace Accord has language in it that usurps the authority of the constitution and changes it into Sharia law. So if you read anything in reference to Sharia law, Sharia law is, um, is, is, is Islamic in nature in that you can lie to people as long as they're non-Muslims, that's okay. Women, you know, are less than third class citizens and everything else that goes along with that. Kill the infidels, the whole nine yards. And so this is what this accord is all about. And President Elizabeth Omar is the uh, is the antagonist, and she's an agent for the apparatus. The apparatus is a or used to be a part of the military arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. And in 2007, nobody was speaking about the Muslim Brotherhood, but they still existed, and they were still doing what they did in the Middle East. And what they did here is to infiltrate the United States. They would send uh, families all over the world to infiltrate Western society in order to take it over from the inside out. And if you see what's going on today, that's exactly what's going on. With the uh, Elian Omar and the, all the, the squad and all this other kind of stuff, you have the communist Marxism, but it's really demonic in nature. At its core, that's exactly what's going on here. And so as a result, uh, these guys have to fight against that. And and they do. They infiltrate the apparatus. And there's a lot of things that are going to go on in the feature film with a lot of uh, special effects and so on and so forth. Uh, that's going to be really exciting. Um, one of the ideas I got from, I don't know if you read this book years ago called Piercing the Darkness or this present darkness. You know, it's interesting. I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's interesting. Oh, yeah. When I read the back of your uh, your book, I was like, oh, Ted's like a Fred Peretti. <laughs> well, that's where I got the idea from. When I read those books, I was like, man, this would be awesome, you know, movies. And yeah. I don't think they ever came to pass. And with the technology that we have nowadays that are available to us, we can really make this thing come alive because it's going to show the angelic working on behalf of God's people and the yes. demonic like really never before. And I, you know, I'm a big movie and television person. My wife and I both, we like watching good stuff. And the sad part about it is 
is that we don't have enough good faith-based films out there that can stand up to Hollywood standards. And I'm not talking about the crap and garbage that they're, they're shoving out these days. I'm talking about the production value, the writing, um, the acting, and everything else that goes along with that. Um, the Bible says that we're 10 times better than anything the world has to offer, and yet we stop ourselves from going out and doing everything to our very best because we're afraid of being talked about. We're afraid of controversy. Uh, we don't want to fight anybody. With Jesus. If you read the four Gospels, Jesus spoke out against the Pharisees and Sadducees, but we don't want to do that. We want to kumbaya, let's all get along. Well, the devil and his crowd are not interested in getting along with what we have to offer. And so what we've been taught in our in our church home in, in New Orleans, and we have a church home too in St. Louis called Hope Church, which is another fantastic church. Um, but we were taught there to go counter to the culture and to fight in reference to, you know, what the, what the counterculture is doing. And this is part of what we're doing with the Restorer. I love that because we do need to be in a, a, a posture of counterculture because the culture has changed rapidly and it's changing um, the generations that come behind us. Uh, and it's, it's you know, it's, there's that statement that what one generation allows, the other celebrates. And yes. we've seen that. I mean, I don't know how old you are, but I'm in, you know, my late 50s. And and it's, it's very apparent just over the years watching things go that direction. But I want to piggyback on a couple of things you said, because you gave us so much valuable information here. And listen, you guys need to get a hold of this. OK, when you see that film coming out, I need you to promote it. When you see the book coming out, I need you to purchase it. I need you guys to come along board because Ted made a really good point. In the past, we have seen a lack of um, production finances for for good faith-based films. Now, it's gotten better over the years, you know, the Kendrick brothers and, um, you, you know, do you know uh, uh, Cameron Arnett? Uh, yeah. He's got some stuff coming out. I mean, there's a lot of different people in the industry. I've got a lot of friends that are in the film industry that are sold out for Christ, that are bringing their gifts and talents from the secular world into faith-based film because they want to glorify God with their gifts and their talents. And so, and you've done that as well, because you've been in a bunch of stuff over the years. Um, I was reading your bio and I, that's why I didn't read it off. And for those of you watching this on YouTube uh, and so forth, I will have that in the, in the notes. And whenever we broadcast this on the podcast, it'll be in the notes. So you can read more about Ted and some of the projects he's worked on, but you have seen some high quality films out there. What was your favorite project that you worked on personally um probably the most eye-opening that i worked on and i wasn't really i was a um i was a stand-in on uh hurricane season back in 2008 uh this is when i had the opportunity of meeting forrest whitaker courtney b vance who is uh angela um bassett's husband um uh, jb smooth who's a a comedian and and uh, Tim Story, who was the uh, director for the earlier Fantastic Four movies in the early 2000s. And that was my introduction to the next level and how things should go. And when I'm in the midst of people like this, because I want to learn, I want to know how to operate at a completely higher level than where I am you know, right now, because I expect the greater. I'm looking forward to getting there and knowing the keys to the kingdom, so to speak, how what is required of me in order to get there and not only get there, stay there. And then once we're in the promised land, fight more giants to get to another promised land. So, you know, I I I, I just sat back and absorbed. I, I went gaga at first. Because I'm like, oh man, Forrest Whitaker, and you know, and so on and so forth, and you know, I would, and uh, Taraji P Henson was uh, was uh, was in that movie as well. Got a chance to meet her, and you know, and it was just a phenomenal thing. It was wonderful. It was one of the most, the, the biggest highlights of, of my career in reference to that in preparing for the greater, and um, it, it was just phenomenal with that. It was wonderful. Then another film we did just about a little over a year ago, it it wasn't a great film, 
Um, but I got to meet some really good faith-based Christians um, who are on Facebook. I have them as Facebook friends. And then we got a chance to work together on the film. And uh, that wasn't the greatest experience with the director. But again, it was an opportunity to be able to connect. And, and that was wonderful. Um, we need to be more professional and marry our faith with what the word of God says and being able to do that well consistently. And some of that is missing in reference to that. And as I mentioned, the latter film that I worked on, again, it was wonderful, but the, the experience wasn't so wonderful with the director because certain people, again, and I'm not wanting to be, you know, disparaging to anyone, but I like to share my my experiences with people in reference to this. Certain things people can't do. I've been blessed by God to be able to start off with doing screenplays. And I did, I did, I never wrote a screenplay before. When God gave me my first, you know, concept, I'm like, how in the world am I supposed to do that? But then <laughs> by faith, I stepped out and started doing it. Then the Lord would bring people in to steer me in the right direction to make it look more professionally done. So I'm open to his leading and guidance in reference to that. It's the same thing with the novel. I would reach out to people. It's like, well, how do you go about doing this? YouTube is a great, I call it YouTube University. You know, <laughs> I learn a lot of stuff, you know, on you. There's a lot of good stuff out there. And so, and it's a lot of work. You know, don't get me wrong. It's a lot of work. Um, but I enjoy it because I get a chance to be creative. And when these things begin to come out, um, I'm a competitive guy too. So I like to make sure that my stuff is, is top notch, you know, it's top drawer and that, you know, that people enjoy it and they like it. I also like comedy. So we created something called the sinister truth. Again, going counterculture, some people would think the sinister truth and some religious folks were like sin, you know, religion and all this other kind of stuff. But the sinister truth is a combination of uh, in living color and Judge Judy and dealing with the culture. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. I'm trying to wrap my brain around that. <laughs> sure. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because in living color to me is one of the greatest sketch comedies of all time. Um, and this is the, the, the mark that I'm looking to, to hit is excellence, excellence in the comedy. So whatever I write, if it's comedy, action, adventure, uh, mystery, whatever it might be, then we go to make the funny first. It has to be funny because if it's not funny, um, then it's useless. I know a lot of people, you know, they, they try to do comedy and they kind of they dance around it a little bit. I like laugh out loud, belly hurting laughs and the uh, the sinister truth because it will be one of the series that we will produce because we started it off as a web series and um you know it, it's just i i and i write that too so i write from a real place of comedy for me and i'm sure other people you know would like it too that's exciting. I love the fact that you're working on so many different projects and things coming down the path. So Crossing Jordan Entertainment uh, is basically that's your your baby, you and your wife. That's your company, right? Yes. So yeah. in addition to that, you do a lot of voiceover work. I do. Um, I do have a, uh, a website called a king's voice dot com. And I do, you know, some character voices. I wanted to be the me next Mel Blank. Uh, some of your audience may not know who Mel Blank was, but he did the voices of Bugs Bunny, Yosemite Sam, uh, Foghorn Leghorn, Daffy Duck. He was a phenomenal talent, and I wanted to be that. That's why I got into radio broadcasting to try to work on that, but I didn't quite hit the mark on that. But um, I do some very good voiceover work, so I've been blessed to be able to do that. I love that because voiceover work is super important. And I did not realize how important it was until I have some friends that do it. And, you know, cause you just think it's talking and it's, it's more than that. Right. And uh, it is basically acting with your voice. And, uh, and, and so you don't see the body language. So it's so important. What is inflected 
from that. And I absolutely love that. So listen, you guys, if you're looking for a voiceover artist, this is your guy and here's the website. And for those of you listening to this uh, on uh, a podcast rather than video, it is a kingsvoice.com and that'll be in the note shows as well for you guys to go back and take a look at that so i want to go back to the book because i'm so excited um you know about what you're doing with the entertainment business as well as um the voiceover work that you do but this book uh, to me is going to be quite the eye opener for a lot of people. Are you concerned about backlash at all because of the, it dances on, you know, we say, okay, well, this is, this is what if, but there's just hearing you tell about it. I'm like going, uh, Ted, there's some truth in that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. Um, and no, you know what? Um, my wife and I, and, and just a little backstory, we, we produced a little while ago, about a year or two ago, um, a series, a, a, a comedic series of biblically correct, not politically correct with Ted and Crystal. I watched then, one. I giggled. I loved oh, it. Did you? Yeah. We <laughs> wanted, we, again, we wanted to take a shot in the eye to the devil and his crowd in reference to God reigns supreme, no matter how foolish and silly and stupid your, your, your you know, your manifesto is, God reigns supreme. Amen. And the same thing with the restorer. Um Christians do not need to lose heart. We need to take up our armor and start fighting back. This is the big thing that the restorer gives is hope that God is still in control. Hope and 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 that we win. We win. We are winners. We need to be, you know, we need to, uh, a friend of mine's dad would say he was a Navy SEAL for Jesus. That's what we need to be. We need to be you know, on point in warfare, not crying out, oh, please, God, help me, take me, uh, rapture me now. No. What, are you, what is the race that you're supposed to be running? And run that race. Run that race. And this is what the restorer did. It gives hope. It gives you, um, uh, it, it's the, it, it, it causes you and challenges you to go back and say, what do you really believe? Do you trust God no matter what the situation is? And with Biden and what he's doing right now and all his, you know, his, his, his emissaries, it's like, okay, no matter what he's trying to do, he can't do anything more than what God allows. In the meantime, God's people are still being blessed and prosperous if you believe and trust him in that. This is what the restore is all about. It's about no matter how dark it seems, because if you go back to the Israelites, uh, the plagues were all around Egypt, but it didn't touch anywhere with Israel. And I told people that. I said, look, don't worry about what Biden does do and don't do. God will still provide for his people. And Amen. this restore encourages. It encourages people to step up and stand up and not cower in the corner and let the devil's people have their way. Because God, at the end, the earth belongs to him and everything in it. Yes, and the fullness thereof. And I do believe that, uh, Ted, I believe the heart of the king is in the hand of the father. And God's not surprised by any of this. And no. uh, so many things we see today, I feel like is uh, just falling it right into prophetic timelines, if you will. And we have got to be um, warriors, not warriors. You know, so many people have been stricken down with fear to the point of they're numb. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that fear brings torment. And right. so I think that the timing of this book is so important because of the fact that it is going to be, bring hope. You know, we look at the fact that whenever Satan got kicked out of heaven, you know, it says that he took a third of the heavenly angels with them. So we forget that there are two thirds of warring angels out there on our behalf. And the, the spirit realm is very, very real. And uh, people, they look to the natural. They don't look to the spiritual. And God is, you know, he is in control. Nothing surprises him. So I love the fact that the timing of this book is perfect. Yeah. And again, it's it's so strange because it came, you know, what is this? 2022 and it came to me in 2007, you know, <laughs> so I'm like, because I, I, I look at things, I examine things, I, I pay attention to what's going on and I filter that through the word of God. And it's like, wow, what if? And it was so sad to see a lot of church people just just get all euphoric over a skin color and not character. Yeah. I was never invited back to a church that I, I spoke frequently at a church and um, it was, it was predominantly, you know, um, it was, it, 
I was I was kind of surprised because I made the uh, the wrong comment. I was said, you know, listen, we really need to fast and pray because we I am excited that God wants to put you know, some uh, diversity into the White House. We need diversity. We need people of color uh, in leadership. But I said, I'm not too sure this is the guy. And man, I'll tell you, I got some serious backlash for that right. comment. And, and, that, uh, and we, we need to vote the Bible, not, not, right. uh, it is Bible first and then, uh, you know, who we are. I think uh, Pastor Tony Evans said it best. He said, we got the noun and the verb all jacked up. Sorry. Well, he didn't say it that way. I'm paraphrasing. I, lo I love Tony Evans. He's great. I do too. He's I great. do too. Uh, he's. Have you read his new book? Um, we did our men's Bible study off of. We've done prayer and we did one other thing. Um, but uh, I got hip to him back in '86 when I uh, worked uh, at a Christian radio station here in St. Louis called KSIB, and uh, the way he breaks things down, he is phenomenal. Oh my this God. guy is off the hook. He really is. He's wonderful. Yeah, God has anointed him and he has written a book. I don't know if y'all, um, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's called, and I just pulled it up to make sure I quoted it right because I just misquoted him. He did not say it's jacked up. I said it's jacked up. That's according to Maggie. But it's that, called Maggie's Kingdom Race Theology, God's answer, answer to our racial crisis. And I, man, I've listened to some interviews and I've ordered the book. I can't wait, Ted, because I am so tired of us fighting over the wrong thing where it, it's smoke and mirrors to keep right. us distracted. So we are not in unity. The church needs to come together and crisis is a cornerstone. And we have got to get our eyes off of all the shiny things and say, okay, God, what are you doing here? What, what do you want from us? How can we serve you best? And I love what you said. We have to run the race and right. we don't need to be over on somebody else's track field. We need to do what God's called us to do. Exactly. And you, God has called you to write these screenplays, write this book, bring people together in the entertainment industry to be able to give him the glory, but also to encourage the body of Christ. That's a beautiful thing. Amen. You know, the word of God says the, the culture of men, the traditions of men make the word of God of no effect in their lives. That's right. And people are so afraid of other people. They're afraid of what their family is going to say. They're afraid of what their mom is going to say, what their pastor is going to say. Just like you said with the people in that church, their culture was more important. When Black Lives Matter was a thing, and then you find out later on how much of a crackpot, anti-Christ thing it really was, uh, you it, it, it exposed the racism all around people. Yes. You're wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt, yet you're singing in church on a Sunday, doesn't all lives matter to God? And then you're chided when you say that. Well, the Bible says that we are all fearfully and wonderfully made in his That's image. Right. All of us, That's not right. some of us, all Amen. of us. So going back to your, your question about backlash, no, I know I'm going to get it. So, you know, the, the higher up we go, the more persecution we're going to get. That's right. Um, I don't like to be talked about or lied on or betrayed. Um, right. You know, but if it happened to Jesus, well, duh, it's going to happen to us. And it's already happened. Yes. So the more the higher up we go, the more prosperity we get, the more persecution we have to deal with. And that's why we have to continue to study the word and activate the word in our lives continuously. Amen. Continuous, the whole armor of God, not part of it, not some of it. And if I lose people on the way. As long as I don't lose him, my <laughs> wife, my son, I'm good. So, you know, because we're all on one accord here. So I'm, I'm not concerned too much about anybody else. It's like, okay, we've lost friends before. Uh, I've lost people who, who, who unfriended me on Facebook because of my views. They don't follow me. Some of them are church people. Some of them I go to church with. It's like, okay, um, if you don't want to go any further with this, with God, that's your business. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm running my race. As for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord fully, not part of the way, not some of the time, you know, not, you know, enough of the foolishness. We have the truth. We have the most powerful thing that we could ever have. And that's knowing Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and to share the good news with those people who are in bondage whether they be in church or not in church. 
if you don't want to hear it, okay, fine. Jesus didn't run after anybody. That's right. Chase people down. None of that. If you didn't Amen. want to say, to stomp the dust off your feet and move Go on. on. <laughs> move on. It sounds cruel and harsh, but that's what he said. It's like, okay, well, why would I not follow him? Why are believers putting on the rainbow hat and talking about I'm gonna I'm going to support my you know homosexual bit? We need to stop this foolishness and go back to what the word of God actually says and see him move. The political realm, Hollywood, we should have had all that. Right. Oh yeah. We should have been taking dominion over all of that, and yet the the, the body of Christ is so easily, easily divided easily divided yeah and that you know that's where i know it's got to break the heart of god to see us all sprat you know sprattered and you know you bring up some really good points even you know so many people are like they see the christian faith as divisive and the and it is really all comes down to are we practicing what the word says and the word is powerful. So, oh my goodness, this is such good stuff, Law. If y'all are just logging on or, you're, or you just got on the broadcast, that I'm here with author, screenwriter, actor, um, po- or broadcaster, um, the list goes voiceover artist, Ted Jordan. And we've been talking about his new book coming out, The Restore, and it's going to come out in a couple months. So do we have any timeline on when the film, the feature film is going to come out? We're in development right now, so we have a $5 million budget because we uh, hired a line producer about a year ago. And so we want to do things in a spirit of excellence. Wow. Uh, we don't want to try to get by just to get by on something. If, if we want to pay people. We want to pay people well. That means the cast and crew, not just paying the crew and then not you know asking people to work for free, you know. You know, we've done that with uh, with one project. I really didn't want to do it with that, but I, I felt a, I felt a leading to do that. But I said, you know, Lord, I I want to pay people and stop just you know begging people to do stuff for free and let the Lord maybe bless you down the road. But no, God says give. How does how does the scripture say? If you hire somebody, give that person a decent wage or the right wage or however it says. And we want to do that. We want to we want to do in excellence what Hollywood does Amen. with residual income with. And we want to be one of the greatest independent film companies on the planet. That means that the restorer not only hits in uh, in the faith based community, but it's doing so well that it spills over that it cannot be ignored. See, the hook for the world is money because that's their God. Like, right. okay, that's cool, but we're not going to, we're not going to water it down because you're comfortable. You like it so much because it makes so much money for you. But then, I, and this is a prayer that I have for any project that anybody reads, that somebody be touched by what is read, whether it's the novel, um, whether it's a developmental editor, whether it's an actor, whether it's a potential producer, whoever it might be, they read mm-hmm. it their lives begin to change because of the message in it, whether it's comedy or action adventure, it doesn't matter, but that anointing power is on. It's like, this is funny, but wow, this message, I I can't ignore this message. Amen. Wow. That's so good. Well, Ted, I'll tell you, I just really excited about what God's doing through you and your wife and Crossing Jordan Entertainment. So y'all follow them on Facebook, look for their videos, purchase their products and uh, and share with others. And uh, I'll I'll post when the book comes out, I'll post it on my website. So make sure that you follow up and get a copy of that and buy copies for friends because it's going to, it's going to, it's going to shake some things up in a good way. And so we need to know if God is for us, who can be against us. So real quick, Ted, if you could leave the audience with the key, it could be your favorite scripture, quote, anything, what key would you leave the audience with? Mark eleven twenty four. whatever you believe for in prayer, believe that you've already received it and you will have it. Amen. And he doesn't put a limit on it. As long as you're not violating his word somewhere, he does not limit it. It's only limited by what you can really believe him for. Amen. And, you know, you guys heard it here today on Keys to Your Best Life. The word is alive and well, and God is on the throne, and we are excited uh, about what he's doing. So I hope you guys will share this with your friends, family, coworkers. And I want to thank you, Ted, for taking out time to be here with me today. 
Thank you, Maggie. I appreciate it. God bless you, brother. For those of you watching, make sure that you share this out and we'll see you next time here on Keys to Your Best Life.